This virtual reality film is brought to you by Honoring the Future. Exploration. It isn't just for Christopher Columbus, or Magellan discovering new worlds, or Sir Edmund Hillary climbing to the summit of Mount Everest. Exploration takes place each and every day. It stems from our most deep-seated curiosities and helps solve our most perplexing problems. Take a look at climate change, the greatest challenge humankind has faced in generations. How will it reshape our Earth? How quickly? And what can we do about it? We can explore to help solve this monumental puzzle. We can explore in the Arctic Circle, the tropics, our neighborhoods, or even online. Through tools like 360 Video, we can accompany scientists to the far corners of the Earth to observe just how our planet is changing. We can travel to glaciers, those massive ice structures that form whenever the summers are cool enough to prevent all the winter snow from melting. Glaciers exist on every continent except Australia, and millions of people around the world depend on them. They provide water for drinking, irrigation, and hydroelectric power, and their spectacular vistas attract tourists, boosting local economies. But as our Earth warms, most glaciers are shrinking dramatically. Less snow falls in the winter, more ice melts in the summer, and the extra runoff to the oceans cause sea levels to rise. Climate explorers like Berger Einersen with the Icelandic Meteorology Office are taking measurements to see just how much Iceland's glaciers are melting. Let's go inside one of these glaciers, into an ice cave, to see just how you measure climate change. So we are at the base of Bredemerkujökull uh, on the southeastern coast of Iceland. And we are maybe 150 meters inside the glaciers and maybe underneath 10 meters of ice or so. And uh, as the temperature in here is maybe a bit above zero, we have a bit of uh, surface melting going on. Uh, and that's the dripping water and dripping sound that you can hear around us. So probably earlier this summer uh, or yeah, late during last autumn, this would all be water filled, water flowing through here, uh, transporting melt from the surface of the glacier and by the base and out to the, yeah, out to the Pro Glacial River. Climbing through these small ice tunnels, Berger's team measures the ice from inside just to see how much the glacier is changing. We are already seeing the glaciers, so, so the snout of the glacier, the front of the glacier is retreating uh, and in this area it's retreating maybe a few tens of meters every year. We need to think about the glaciers, uh, maybe not purely just because of the glacier, but also because of the sea level change. And the sea level change is a, a major threat to uh, uh, millions of peoples all over the world, in Bangladesh, in Florida and other places. This data is part of a bigger picture that stretches across the globe. Half a world away in Panama, Yanina Seaman is measuring coral health by photographing a reef, one rectangular block at a time. These photographs, along with measurements of water temperature and sea levels, help explain why reefs are changing. I'm working here as a marine ecologist with a specialization on reef ecology. We are basically trying to do an underwater mapping of two reef species, which are the finger coral and the lettuce coral. They're the reef builders here in the area. We want to figure out like, how they could survive the last hundreds of years, and at the same time investigate how this survival chance is changing with all the new human impacts that are coming in. Coral reefs are delicate animals. They need the right amount of sunlight and the right temperature to flourish. And because of climate change, the sea levels are rising and the temperatures of these waters are changing, causing the reefs to die in huge quantities across the globe. Reefs are growing in front of islands and they're like a natural coast protection, so they're keeping that island alive. If we are losing them, we have to replace them and that will be super expensive. From rising sea levels in Miami Beach, Florida, to the changing weather patterns in the great forests of North America. How humans relate to and impact the environment is the next big stage of exploration. How we live, work, and play affect our climate and each other. Because from the busy streets of New York City to the Arctic Circle, our climate is connected. What can you do to explore? Well, take a look around. What do you see in this coral reef? Are there parts that look different from the rest?
Let's go back to Iceland. Take a look around the ice cave. Why do you think all the stones are smooth on the ground? Where do you think the water is coming from? And where is it going? What if we visit a different environment? Look around iconic Times Square in New York City. Where is our energy going? Are there things we can do to help a mega city like New York use energy more efficiently? Look up. These are California's famous redwood trees. They have been on planet Earth for more than 240 million years, and some of today's trees are more than 2,000 years old. By studying these trees, we can see what the atmosphere was like at different times, when it was wet, when there was a drought, and how the climate has changed over thousands of years. Exploration is alive and well. It can be a click and a search away online. It begins by looking at the full picture around you, noticing changes and asking why they occur. Sometimes we don't have all the answers, but through explorers like Berger and Yanina and our own explorations, we can measure these changes and answer some mighty big questions. Questions that go to the heart of what it is to be human and what kind of world we choose to leave our children, grandchildren, and generations to come. Their future hangs on our choices. This virtual reality film is brought to you by Honoring the Future.